Uh, Secretary of State Hobbs, thanks so much again uh, for coming on to the program. I, I just wanted to ask, uh, you know, do you think this has put this uh, issue to rest finally, uh, that people will kind of move on after these results uh, have been presented for well over three hours today? You know, it's clear, uh, hearing what the Senate president uh, just said, who's one of the conspiracy theorists leading our government, that uh, this is not going to be laid to rest. Uh, she just made a lot of allegations that are absolutely baseless and false. And, um, and based on this report, based on this fake audit that has been fraught with problems from the get-go, uh, and um, so, no, this is not going to be laid to rest. Clearly, these folks are going to keep uh, using this misinformation to pass really bad legislation and to continue to sow doubt among the electorate on the integrity of our elections. And Secretary, uh, uh, right now, uh, hashtag decertify Arizona is trending on Twitter. Um, I just want to uh, have you give the opportunity to you to voice to our viewers. Uh, from what I understand, there is really no cert uh, mechanism either in the state constitution or the U.S. Constitution to decertify an election. Is that correct? There is zero basis in law to decertify an election. And I want to make this abundantly clear. Even if there was, there is no basis from anything we've seen here today or in this whole entire process that has been fraught with problems and was not a serious process uh, to decertify the election. Uh, I just want to read uh, from uh, the executive summary in part uh, that we saw last night and that they explained this afternoon. It says, uh, on the positive side, there were no substantial differences between the hand count of the ballots provided and the official canvas results for the county. This is an important finding because of concerns ahead of the audit. Uh, doesn't that just kind of, you know, uh, really put this to bed? Uh, they, they, they came out there with that statement and said, yeah, they basically matched up with what we found. Well, and then they went on to continue to spew this misinformation about all these processes that they absolutely have zero understanding of how they actually work and cast doubt on the number of valid votes that were actually cast. And that, so no, this is not put to bed. They're still continuing to try to sow doubt. I don't care what the results were. This entire process has been uh, completely a, a circus run by people who have no experience with elections or audits and who had a partisan agenda from the start and didn't know what they were doing. And so, no, um, there's no vindication here. And, um, and, and the results are absolutely not even credible. So you don't think that uh, any diehard Republican voter who after today uh, and, you know, they realized Joe Biden was the victor in Maricopa County, ergo Arizona writ large. You don't think they would be persuaded or their mind has changed after today? No, because what we're seeing uh, on social media and attacks at us are that uh, that this the misinformation contained in this report uh, gives credence to the allegations that there was fraud. Uh, and we know that there wasn't. Um, these allegations have no basis, but this report uh, purports to substantiate that there was. And, and like you mentioned, they've using, they're using the terms anomaly, concerns, process errors. Uh, and uh, Maricopa County Board Chairman Jack Sellers says basically all that is just noise because, uh, you know, the headline of this is President Biden uh, in the end of this got 393 more votes. Uh, than originally what the tabulation was. Out of 2.6 million, 393 votes uh, were um, kind of rectified and recalibrated. And so, uh, you know, going forward uh, as the chief uh, steward of elections in the state of Arizona, uh, you know, we're almost up to the midterms. 2024 is right around the corner. Can Arizonans have integrity in the elections in their state? Arizonans 100% can have confidence in the integrity of our elections with or without this sham audit or whatever they believe, I can tell you with 100% confidence that the elections we conducted in 2020 were fair 
and secure and the results we certified were accurate and with that we followed all of the laws in place and all of the procedures in place to ensure the integrity of the election. That's what voters can have confidence in. And yes, all the rest is noise. Unfortunately, uh, the folks that are making that noise are going to continue to try to make that noise to undermine the integrity of our elections. And we've seen some evidence that uh, possibly Karen Fan might be kind of passing the buck on all this uh, to Attorney General Mark Brnovich to see if any statutes were broken back in 2020. Do you think that will turn up anything? There's nothing to investigate. I mean, the attorney general has showed time and time again that he's more interested in uh, his political future and playing political games uh, at the expense of Arizona voters. He hasn't been on the side of Arizona voters. And um, so, so I don't have any confidence in any process that his office would undertake re in regards to this sham audit. Lastly, just let's look at the big picture of this. Do you think, you know, you're running in a highly uh, contested race in 2022, uh, you know, people trying to replace you and succeed you as Secretary of State are as well. In 2022 and 2024, are Republican Secretaries of State around the country, Republican governors around the country, are they laying the groundwork for this that didn't possibly succeed in 2020 to do it yet again in uh, future elections? What's your view on that? I think absolutely this whole exercise has been part of the plan to lay the groundwork to overturn future elections. Uh, and it is, um, it's, it's really unfortunate that folks are running for these offices who are focused on the outcome rather than the process. It is important for election officials who are elected on a partisan ballot or not to focus on the process and ensure that Every eligible voter has access to the ballot and that we carry out the, the processes that are outlined in statute and procedure so that our elections are above board and free and fair. And these partisan officials running for these offices because of the big lie um, really are, it's dangerous to our democracy. So if a Republican succeeds you as Secretary of State in 2022, are you concerned that it might uh, you know, initiate some type of, uh, you know, mechanisms or efforts uh, to do kind of what we saw in 2020? I'm concerned about any, any person running for this office who says, if I was Secretary of State, Donald Trump would still be president or some other specific outcome, because that is not what we are supposed to be focused on. And that is not about party. That is about um, the job that we are entrusted with, um, upholding the constitution and laws of our state and ensuring that we are conducting the duties of our office as fairly and impartially uh, as, as possible. All right, Secretary of State of Arizona, Katie Hobbs, we appreciate your time. Thanks for coming on. We'll talk to you again.